Welcome to this training segment with Enphase Energy. I'm Peter Lum with Enphase Learning and Development, and this session is Designing Systems with the Enphase M250 Microinverter. In this segment, we will provide PV system designers best practice recommendations when using Enphase's M250 in your system designs. At the end of this segment, we want students to be able to list the types of modules best paired with the M250 microinverter, understand and explain branch circuit size limits when using the M250 in both single-phase 240 environments as well as 208-volt three-phase environments. We also want students to be able to utilize the proper resources related to the M250 to correctly calculate overall branch circuit voltage drop or voltage rise and be able to describe three design methods to keep voltage drop and rise within recommended ranges. So let's get started. When using the M250 microinverter for your project, there are a few design considerations to keep in mind. The first is to understand what module to pair with the M250. The DC input voltage of the M250 is well suited for today's 60 cell module technology. Under certain circumstances, the M250 has even been paired with 72 cell modules, but the 60 cell solar module is really the sweet spot. Because of its higher power capability, modules of 300 watts and better um, are good matches for the M250 250 watt CEC rated output. For these higher powered solar modules, the M250 will provide minimal or no clipping and enable maximum harvest. There have been several questions on how to understand the reasoning in pairing 300 watt solar modules with the 250 watt solar inverter. This is a little outside the scope of this training segment, so I'll refer you to the downloadable white paper called Bigger is Better on Enphase's site in our download section. The paper discusses the dynamics of using higher powered modules to maximize inverter harvest with minimal losses. The bottom line is that an M250 with a 300 watt module is a great fit. The next thing that designers should recognize is that the M250 does generate more current than previous Enphase microinverter models, and this will affect our circuit sizing. How much current does the M250 generate? Connected to a 240 volt single phase utility grid, the M250 produces about one amp of current per microinverter, and that's based on nominal output of 240 watts of AC power for the M250 at 240 volts. In comparison, for those installers who have been using the third generation M215 microinverter, the M215 generated about 0.9 amps at 240 volts, just a little less than the M250. So we will factor this into our circuit sizing when uh, using the M250 in our design. Now let's take a look at branch circuit size limits or maximums when using the M250. Remember the foundational architectural building block of the Enphase microinverters is the branch circuit. This is simply an AC circuit wired on the PV array inclusive of the microinverters and then wired to our connection into our electrical panel, uh, our subpanel or main. The bus or engage cable is the end phase wire used to connect all of the microinverters together in the circuit. The combined current of the circuit is wired off of the array back to the electrical panel where each circuit is protected by its own 20 amp overcurrent protection device or circuit breaker. Now designers need to know how many microinverters maximum they can populate on any given branch circuit and onto the end phase engage wire. Because the engage wire is a fixed 12 gauge wire, you don't want to put more current generation on what the recommended rating of the wire is or what the circuit breaker is. So what then is our branch circuit maximum um, for the M250? With the M250, 16 microinverters is our branch limit size maximum and the most you can populate on a single phase 240 volt circuit. For a three phase 208 volt circuit, the maximum is 24 inverters on the branch circuit and that is using Enphase's three phase engage cable. Again, for those that have been designing using the Enphase M215 microinverters, these branch circuit limits are slightly different and designers should be aware of the change. With the M215, the branch limit was 17 inverters maximum on a 240 volt single phase branch circuit and 25 microinverters maximum on a three phase branch circuit. With the M250, the branch limits have been reduced by one microinverter, and that is due to the current generation differences between the M250 and the M215 that we just discussed. So it's simple as that. In summary, for circuit, for circuit size maximums, use 16 microinverters maximum 
when using the M250 on a single phase 240 volt circuit or 24 microinverters maximum for a three phase 208 volt circuit. The last item for designers to be aware of when designing with M250s is the change to voltage drop or drop voltage rise calculations. If you need to brush up uh, your understanding of voltage drop, voltage rise, I would recommend that you pick up our white paper on our nphase.com slash download site. As a quick design review, for designers, it's important in designing branch circuits to account for your overall circuit voltage drop. Remember that what a designer's goal should be with an N-phase circuit is to design for an overall end-to-end -end wiring voltage drop of no greater than 2%. This means that you should calculate the voltage drop percentage associated with the end phase engage or bus wire and add that to the voltage drop percentage of all conductors from the junction box to the point of common coupling or your main panel and that percentage should not exceed 2%. Since this is an important design consideration, let's take a look at an example. Let's say that we have a, we've specified a full branch circuit of M250s designed in landscape mode. Enphase's recommended circuit design would be then to calculate the voltage drop percentage associated with all of the cable from the last inverter all the way to the connection at your main panel. To do this, I would need to take the percentage voltage drop associated with the Enphase engage cable with all of the microinverters and add that percentage to the remaining wire being run off of the array and the total should not exceed 2%, which is my design maximum. Again, for more of this, download the white paper from our site and it explains it a little more in detail. For example though, listed here, how would you go about calculating the overall voltage drop percentages? For the segment of wire from the junction box to the main connection, that's uh, relatively straightforward. You can use a standard voltage drop formula to do this. Since you know uh, the wire gauge you've specified for the run between the main panel and the junction box, you can look at the resistance of the wire with the length of the wire run and the current output of all the microinverters on the circuit, you can calculate the voltage drop of the wire and then the percentage of the voltage drop relative to your grid voltage. Use your favorite formula or yet better, you can use one of those online voltage drop calculators to do this. For the end phase engage wire, the calculations are not so straightforward. Because the engage wire has current generating microinverters populated at incrementing intervals, you cannot use a standard voltage drop formula to calculate the voltage drop for the end phase wire. To make this simple, though, end phase has a voltage drop chart to help designers make the most accurate calculations. And let's see how that looks. Here's the chart that you should be using for the M250. This is our voltage drop chart. For those designers who have been designing M215s and using the M215 voltage drop chart, uh, the M250 chart uh, is different. The M250 chart is updated to specifically reflect the M250's performance characteristics. So here's the question for you. Can you find, in our example, the voltage drop percentage of 16 microinverters designed in landscape mode? You should have identified it. The percentage of voltage drop associated with the in phase engage cable is 1.33%. So in our design, the voltage drop of the engage cable is 1.33%. Now we need to calculate the percentage of the remaining wires. All right, so for the sake of this example, let's say that the, the wire size um, that we've used that's between the main panel and the junction box gives us a total voltage drop on the wire of 0.8 percent that's at 240 volts so 0.8 percent our total voltage drop then on this circuit is 1.33 percent that's associated with the end phase engage cable and 0.8 percent for the remaining run so that is a total of 2.13 percent as I've added the totals here, 1.33% plus 0.8%, that's 2.13, that's end to end. So clearly that 2.13% is over our design recommendation of 2%. The question we need to ask then is what can we do to um, resolve this and try to get the design under 2%.
So what can we do? Well, first we can, of course, change our wire size. The larger the wire size, the less the resistance, the smaller the voltage drop. So that's one way to help the problem. Or secondly, we can reduce our circuit sizes. Instead of having one circuit of 16 microinverters in total, to break it up into two, two smaller circuits, perhaps. This will reduce the length of the engaged wire run because we've got shorter circuits, and the shortened length to the furthest inverter will reduce the voltage drop. So that's a second way we can do this. The third method is perhaps one that's not thought of often, and that is to center feed or split the branch. Center feeding simply is breaking your circuit into smaller segments and paralleling the split, together, split circuit together. If we split our circuit in half, as seen here, we reduce the overall length to the first, furthest inverter in the circuit, and this will help our voltage drop. So to see how this works in practicality, let's take a look back at our chart. Our original design called for 16 microinverters wired from beginning to the end with 16 microinverters length of wire and the voltage drop percentage was 1.33%. If we split our branch and wire from the center of the circuit, the longest distance to the last inverter is now only eight inverters long. If we look back at our chart then, we see that now the voltage drop associated with the engage wire is reduced from 1.33%, that's with 16 inverters, to 0.35%, that is now accounting for eight inverters on the circuit versus a full length of 16. So that's a significant reduction in the voltage drop associated with the end phase and gauge cable. With this decrease, we will bring um, our design to under 2%. So for designers, end phase recommends that you always consider center feeding. It's a good practice and there's a huge benefit in reducing voltage drop. Again, when designing circuits using M250 microinverters, you should use the new M250 chart and not use the M215 chart. All right, those, those were the three main design considerations when you uh, begin to use the M250 in designing your projects. So here's some learning check questions to make sure that you've been tracking with what we've been doing. First question is, what is the best type of module to pair with an M Enphase M250 microinverter? The answer, of course, is that the M250 is re really designed well for a 60-cell type module um, to about 300 watts or better. 300 watts is really kind of the sweet spot and 60 cells. The next question is, for a 240-volt single-phase circuit, what is the maximum number of M250 microinverters allowed on our branch circuit? The answer, of course, is 16. 16 is our branch circuit maximum for a single-phase 240 circuit. How about for a 208-volt three-phase design? What's the maximum number of M250 microinverters allowed on a branch circuit? Three-phase 208. Okay, the answer there is 24. So 24 inverters using the three-phase engage cable. The maximum is 208 for a 208 volt three phase design, the maximum number is 24 inverters on a circuit. All right, one last question. See if you can find the right answer on this one. The engage cable for the M250 has a larger capacity wire, larger gauge wire for larger capacity, or B can accommodate more microinverters per circuit, or C is the same engage cable used for the M215 microinverter, or D does not support three phase, only single phase. So the answer is, it's C. There is no change in the engage cable between the M250 and the M215, and so it uses the same wire, and we've been learning that in our design section. If you'd like more information, there are resources available. If you go to Enphase.com, under the Resources tab and under Download the Library, there's a number of documents that will help you in understanding more about the design for the M250. One of the key ones is this voltage drop technical brief. 
As we've told about, talked about voltage drop dynamics, this is a good paper that describes that. Thanks for joining us today. We hope to catch you on the next web session when we're going to be talking about installation practices as well as more on integrated grounding.